The title of the paper is Experimenting with Formal Verification and Model-Based Development in Railways, the Case of UMC and Sparks Enterprise Architect. The authors of the paper are Davide Basile, Franco Mazanti, and Alessio Ferrari from CNR, Pisa. The Formal Methods and Tools Lab of the Institute of Information Science and Technologies of the Italian National Research Council offers two temporary positions for research in the field of formal modeling and analysis of critical software systems, in particular but not limited to the railway and service computing domains. The contact emails are in the slide. We start the presentation by talking about formal methods in railways and model-based software engineering. Then. We introduce Sparks Enterprise Architect and UMC, the two tools used in this paper. Afterwards, we describe the mapping from and to the two tools and the application of the proposed methodology to a case study from the railway domain, and the conclusion. The railway domain is safety critical. For the highest safety integrity level, SIL4, formal methods are highly recommended by standards like Senelic. As you know, Formal methods are helpful to increase the safety of software systems by providing formal guarantees that certain desired conditions hold. They are also helpful to reduce costs, for example, of maintenance. Model-based software development is an industrially adopted methodology where applications are developed using models. Examples of MBSD tools are PTC Windchill, Cameo System Modeler and Sparks Enterprise Architect. These tools are based on the OMG UML ISO standard, which is considered a semi-formal method. Semi-formal methods owe their name to their lack of a formal semantics, which is only described in natural language documents. These natural language semantics contains aspects that are intentionally left and unintentional ambiguities. As a result, the same model executed on different simulators may behave differently. There is a growing body of literature on the formalization and verification of UML models, specifically, UML state machines. A recent paper of 2023, referred in the footnote, surveys many of them, including UMC, the formal tool used in this paper. The survey reports that UMC could be used to verify UML models. Until now, there was no paper where UMC was applied to UML diagrams developed using MBSD models. Of course, UMC can be used to verify UML models and this paper tackles this aspect. This survey also states that rarely counterexamples are mapped back to the original models. Generally, one has a semi-formal model that is translated into a formal model. The formal verification is carried out on the translated formal model. The trace produced by the formal verification should be mapped back to the original model to apply fixes, for example, in case some property is not satisfied. In this paper, we study the integration of UMC with Sparks Enterprise Architect, showing how the traces generated from UMC can be reproduced as simulations in Sparks EA. As stated previously, model-based software development is an industrially used methodology for developing software and systems using models. The development is driven by models at various phases of the software life cycle. There are models of requirements, class diagrams showing the relations among classes, and diagrams showing the behavior, for example state machines, sequence diagrams. UML is obest on the object-oriented paradigm. Classes are used to models the software, with relations between classes. Classes are instantiated to objects. Classes have attributes and classified behaviors. A classified behavior of a class can be a UML state machine. In this paper, we use a simplified version of state machines, with only states and transitions. The labels of transitions are as showed in the slide. Transitions are triggered by signals, and if certain conditions predicating on the attributes and parameters of the signals are met, then the effect of the transition is executed. The effect generally updates the attributes of the object. Sparks Enterprise Architect is an industrial tool based on OMG UML. Part of this work has been done in the context of an H2020 Shift 2 Rail project called 4SEC Rail. 
Inside the project we selected one of the available MVSD tools based on different criteria, during the phase of cost analyses. For example, the license cost for Sparks EA was much lower than other tools, especially when the code generator is included in the bundle. We were specifically interested in composing state machines. Various tools differ in the way in which state machines are composed, and Sparks EA provides a simple artifact. Sparks EA features executable state machines, which are a special artifact used to compose different instantiations of state machines. The picture on the left corner shows the executable state machine of the case study of the paper. State machines are linked by connectors used to send messages. Executable state machines feature a simple send instruction to send signals, which can be easily translated to slash from UMC. When simulating an executable state machine, basically Sparks EA compiles the executable state machine into source code. The source code contains the code for the classes, the state machines, but also the code for the execution engine. This is crucial to inspect the execution engine to understand the semantics choices made in Sparks EA. The simulation of an executable state machine is basically a graphical debugging of the generated code. Whilst the code is being debugged, there is a graphical animation animating the various state machines, showing the current state and other aspects. The user interacts at console with the executable state machine. The user can send triggers to the executable state machine, triggering run to completion cycles of all state machines. The picture on the right corner shows a snapshot of a simulation of the case study in the paper. The UML model checker is a tool developed by the FMT lab at ISTICNR. It is freely available at the link in the slide. The picture shows the welcome page of UMC. It is currently maintained by Franco Mazanti, one of the authors of this paper, which is also the main developer. UMC is oriented towards fast prototyping of state machines, i.e., when the modeling is in the early stages and the models are not too big. UMC features model checking of a dialect of CTL properties. The formalism is a simplified version of UML state machines. The model checker uses on-the-fly model checking, where the state space can be generated up to a certain depth and expanded afterwards. The semantics of UMC models is given by the construction of a doubly labeled transition system, reference 1 in the slide. Furthermore, a UMC model can be translated to Lotus NT or PROB, reference 2 in the slide. In this case, the source and target models are proved to be strongly bisimilar. This means that, for example, we can assign the formal semantics of Lotus NT, an ISO standard, to UMC models, once they are proved strongly bisimilar. In this paper we proposed a bidirectional translation approach, the models can be translated backward and forward from UMC to Sparks EA. This can be achieved once certain syntactic restrictions are in place in Sparks EA. The syntactic restrictions are displayed in the slide. Most of them are only syntactic sugar. These restrictions are important to disambiguate the semantics aspects of UML that are left open by the standard. Other restrictions are more stringent. For example, the transitions of a Sparks EA state machine may contain source code in the code of the conditions and effects. We only restrict the code of the effects to arithmetic operations on the attributes of the state machine. Assign the formal semantics of UMC state machines to Sparks EA state machines. We need to ensure that the semantics of Sparks EA and UMC are aligned. Sparks EA state machines do not have a formal semantics, it is not possible to formally prove the semantics correspondence of source and target models. Indeed, no state space generation is possible in Sparks EA. As stated earlier, we performed a manual inspection of the execution engine of Sparks EA. For example, the enforced order in which the events are picked from the pool of events of each state machine is FIFO. This is also the case in UMC. Thanks to the syntactic restrictions, Sparks EA models are deterministic. This means that there are no conflicts in enabled transitions. Indeed, the way in which conflicts are solved is ambiguous in the standard. Similarly, 
In Spark's EA there is a fixed order of scheduling of the state machines. An interesting observation is that, since the order of scheduling is fixed, a simulation of Spark's EA may miss some executions that are present in the real system, but not in the simulation. This is one of the aspects that can be improved with formal methods. In fact, UMC generates the state space for all the possible schedulings of state machines, and for all conflicts. Hence, it covers all the possible traces of the real system. Thus, the semantics of UMC includes the semantics of Spark's EA. Furthermore, whenever the formal verification produces a trace, we show how this trace can be reproduced in Spark's EA. This further validates the semantics correspondence between Spark's EA and UMC. We discuss the difference between interactive simulation and model checking. Assume that only component C1 is fully modeled, whilst C2 is treated as environment. In MBSD the validation is mainly carried out through interactive simulations, which we said is a form of graphic debugging. In this case, the user takes the role of the environment, and sends signals to C1 pretending to be C2. Instead, in model checking we need to also have a model of the environment, so we have a stub model of C2. This is necessary to obtain a fully closed system and proceed with automatic formal verification. The stub basically models the scenarios in which we are verifying the model. We discuss some of the rules present in the paper to relate UMC models with Spark's EA models. All rules are almost straightforward, as both models are UML state machines. The only important difference is how state machines interact. In both models, objects have references to the other objects they are interacting with. In UMC, sending of a signal to an object is similar to invoking a method of the object, but the signal is non-blocking. In Spark's EA we have a send instruction showed in the slide. The target of the signal is the recipient parameter, which is a name assigned to the connector of the executable state machine as showed in the slide. Signals that are attributes of each class in UMC are in correspondence with global trigger events in the Spark's type signal and have the same parameters as in UMC. This is an example of translation of a send instruction. The signal is called psi underscore disconnect underscore request and is sent to the psi. We can see in the boxes the two instructions in UMC and Sparks EA. Concerning receiving a signal and reading its parameters values, in UMC this is simply done by using the name of the parameter of the signal. In the condition, indicated inside the box, we are checking whether the parameter type is not equal to life sign. In Spark's EA we need to use Java source code to access to the actual variable storing the value of the parameter. This instruction was derived from the compiled code of the state machine, by looking at where the parameter was stored. We can see here that Spark's EA state machines are semi-formal as they are mixing UML constructs with source code. The case study in this paper is borrowed from the 4SEC URAIL paper. Two years ago at FMIX 2021 we discussed the formal modeling of this case study in UPAL. Other papers have been published and are reported in the footnotes. The case study is the standard interface for the handover of trains between radio stations. In this paper, we only focused on a small layer of the protocol stack, called the Communication Supervision Layer, CSL, which is in charge of opening and closing the connection between two radios, called initiator and called, and checking that the connection stays alive using life sign signals. This is the initiator CSL state machine. UMC is on the left, and by Sparks EA is on the right. This is just to show that the two state machines are almost identical, they have the same number of states and transitions. For further technical details we refer to the paper. This is the executable state machine of Sparks EA showing how the state machines are connected. The only modeled state machines are the initiator and called CSL. All the others are empty state machines, only used to have a context reference for sending and receiving signals. The interactive user will take the role of the other state machines. We now discuss how the formal verification output of UMC is translated back as a simulation of Sparks EA. 
The property that we check in UMC is checking if there exists a trace where in some state the attribute send timer error is true. This attribute is true if the counter send timer has exceeded its maximum allowed value. We applied a mutation to the model to make this property fails. Model-based mutation testing can be used to check whether the set of properties that we verify is complete, in the sense that when we apply a mutation we expect some property to not hold any more. In this case, we changed a conjunction to a disjunction in the condition of the label of one transition, depicted in the slide. UMC shows that the property holds, i.e., the timer can exceed the threshold. UMC provides a sequence of interactions as a plant UML sequence diagrams, showing how the state where the error occurs can be reached. The sequence diagram is showed in the slide. The idea is that every signal that is sent by some state machine to the ICSL can be reproduced by the interactive user in Spark's EA simulation. There are five signals sent to ICSL. Each signal is translated into a send instruction that the user has to type at console during the simulation of Spark's EA. The next slides show the correspondence of each simulation instruction with the corresponding message from the sequence chart. This is a slide showing the UMC window where the send timer error attribute is written. In this slide we see the window where the CTL property is written and the button for obtaining the sequence diagram. This is the Sparks EA simulation window. It is showed the moment in which the send timer error is true. On the right column we can inspect the value of the attributes. We also display the mutated transition in the box. It is also displayed the interactive console used to type instructions. The paper contains a link to a Zenodo repository. The repository contains a video showing how this verification is performed. The video shows both the UMC verification phase and the simulation done in Sparks EA. Conclusion We have discussed an integration of UMC formal verification with Sparks EA. We discussed the UML notation restrictions, the translation rules for mapping the two models. We discussed the semantics correspondence between the models, and how the output of UMC can be reproduced as a simulation in Sparks EA. The paper also includes a set of lessons learned and limitations which we partially discussed. As future work, currently the code generated by Sparks EA is only used for simulation purposes. We would like to implement a proof of concept application fully developed with Sparks EA and formally verified with our approach. Thanks for your attention.